What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for the week 8 battle for the LBA. Now of course, um, we're coming off another loss from last week with the LBA. So again, I knew my work was cut out for me. My opponent in this particular week definitely had a great record. So I, it would have been great to lay a loss on him and I really felt highly pressured to do so. But at the same token, I did not feel like I had a terrible team matchup. Uh, in fact, Venusaur was able to block a lot of his Pokemon in the combination of Venusaur and uh, Rotom, actually, in this matchup, was able to do a lot of damage to any other potential Pokemon that he might bring. Now, of course, my opponent this week was the uh, Rida uh, Riyad Rhyhorns, excuse me, Rhydons. I always say Rhyhorns for some reason. And he had a variety of Pokemon. I didn't want to bring anything that could set up, because he could, of course, bring. He could have brought Ditto. Uh, I was expecting Mega Sableye, and I definitely was expecting Manaphy. I did think that he was going to go ahead and bring Porygon too, but he actually didn't end up bringing that, which I was very happy to see. I put Knock Off on a few Pokemon, expecting to see that. But, and all in all, I when I saw the team preview, I was pretty relieved. In this matchup, my plan was really just to weaken his whole team, so that Rotom and Weavile could clean up. I had defensive Venusaur, Donphan, and specially defensive Togekiss with Abandoned Tyrantrum uh, with Life Orb, Weavile, and a Scarf uh, Rotom. So I really had the opportunity here to do a lot of damage to his team and then allow my other Pokemon to clean up. It really would just require some prediction. And I also brought the Togekiss for this battle, who has Baton Pass. So I brought Baton Pass, Togekiss, and I had the Volts, which are on Rotom, to allow me to keep some of that pressure up throughout the battle. Now, with all that being said, uh, it is going to be important that I don't let Manaphy or Sableye set up. I don't have any aware, unaware Pokemon. And at the same token, I uh, really don't want Clefki to set up screens in my face either. Um, I don't have any way of breaking the screens, and then that would make it a lot easier for some of his other Pokemon to set up in my face. I actually expected him to lead with either a Zelf or Clefki when I saw the team preview. Just those Pokemon in general are good leads that can set up entry hazards, they can taunt, uh, a Zelf can do a lot of damage. So I kind of prepped expecting to see one of those two for a lead, but he leads right out with Sableye, which is unfortunate. Um, I just didn't expect him to lead right out with that from the start like that. So uh, it does work out for him though, if I had let out with something that could set up entry hazards, he could have just bounced him right back with Magic Bombs. So he's going to get off a priority call mine with Prankster as I just go right ahead and Volt Switch out into my Togekiss. Uh, seeing the damage there, I know he's probably physically offensive because I was after plus one and I still did a quarter of his health and damage. Uh, Thunderbolt may have been a 2-8 KO actually, because I was just Volt Switch. But now I see that a non-invested Dazzling Gleam is almost a 2-8 KO, and that it is a 2-8 KO if he ever doesn't have a Calm Mind up. Uh, I just went for Dazzling Gleam again, trying to hope, I was trying to force him into going for some type of recovery move or will or something. But as he goes out into Golbat, he sets up a Tailwind, and that's fine. I just went for Baton Pass here to see if he was going to double switch a U-turn or something like that, because I need to be faster. Now, as I go out into my uh, Tyrantrum, I knew uh, Clef Key might be coming in, but since a lot of my team members here are doing specially based damage, I really wanted to force him to set up the Reflect, but I didn't do quite enough damage to do so. And with that, I'm just going to switch on into Rotom. He can't paralyze Rotom. If he goes for foul play, Rotom doesn't have very high attack. And if he goes for flash cannon, I resist it. So that works out pretty well. It forces him to waste his tailwind. And at the same token, he just gets a life screen. So I am definitely okay with that. Uh, Klefki doesn't have any reliable recovery either. And without seeing an item, I'm assuming he has light clay. So I was in a position where I felt pretty good about things. I did not want to stand against Entei as Sacred Fire would do a ton of damage, and it would also have the possibility for burn. While I do have Heal Bell on Togekiss, why take the burn if I don't have to? Of course, Sacred Fire does have a 50% chance to burn, so as much as I get burned by Scalds, I'm probably going to get burned by Sacred Fire too. But that's okay though, I just go for Earthquake here in case he stays in trying to burn me. Uh, I actually do a good amount of damage to Sableye, considering that it's probably max defense. Expecting him to recover, I just go back out in the Togekiss to stop him from getting up any Calm Minds. And I did expect him to switch, so I decided to go for Baton Pass right as he switches, and that works out really well because now I can finally get some offensive momentum 
as I go out into my Rotom. Uh, I really thought that a Shadow Ball would do more damage, but that's not taking into account that the Light Screen is up. So I probably would have KO'd it, or at least taken him down to his Sash, had the Light Screen not been up. Now that he has his Rocks up, that puts a lot of pressure on my team, especially with the way that I've been switching Togekiss around. Um, now, I didn't want to let Manaphy have a free switch in, but at the same time, I didn't know who he was going to switch into. Uh, I actually was worried that he was going to switch into the Sableye underneath the Light Screen, which is why I just stayed in and went for a Shadow Ball again. Uh, I knew Venusaur could take an Ice Beam from Manaphy as long as he wasn't at plus three, even without Mega Evolving. I changed Troops uh, EVs around a little bit to ensure that I could take that Ice Beam. And then once I Mega Evolve, I can easily take that Ice Beam. So now we're just going to Mega Evolve and go for Synthesis. Uh, Sableye comes back in, which is a little bit annoying. I don't really have anything to hit it with Venusaur. But at the same token, can't really do much to me either. We both have recover, uh, recovery options, rather he has more PP on his recovery option than I do. But that's okay. I just went for Sludge Bob here, actually expecting him to go out into his, uh, I think I was expecting him to go out into his Manaphy. Because of course I'm not going to use a Grass Titan right there. But that works amazingly. Uh, I'm able to do a lot of damage to Entei and see that he has leftovers, which is good to know. And as he switches in the cleft key, I went into my Rotom expecting him to just go straight for the life screen again. But now that he doesn't have the like clay anymore, that means it won't be up as long and I'm able to finish off cleft key really, really nice in the beginning of the battle here. Um, so Rotom picks up a KO there, which is pretty nice too because Rotom needs those KO points. Now, as he comes out with Entei, if the light screen weren't up, I would feel a lot more comfortable just staying in and attacking. But here, I have to risk getting burned by Sacred Fire, because I don't really have any other good switches besides Donphan. It doesn't really do any damage, but he gets the burn. Again, Sacred Fire does have a 50% chance of burning, and he didn't burn me last time, so on a coin flip, that makes sense. Uh, I did not want to switch out here. I figured he was going to go into Sableye, and I want to force Sableye into recovering. I do not want to give that thing a chance to set up. And so even with the burn, I can do a KO Sableye, which is amazing. Expecting him to uh, probably switch out or recover up here. I'm just going to go into Sky Dancer. Hopefully get a chance to use Heal Bell or at the very least go for a, uh, a Wish. And um, there, are, there are a few things I could do here. Here he surprised me with Psychic, of course. And so Heal Bell is going to be what I go for here just because I really need to get the burn off of Tyrantrum. Uh, but that's nice though, that means the light screen is down, he can't 2 it KO me with Psychic, but he does get the special defense drop which sucks because I could have just stayed in and gotten all my HP back if he hadn't gotten that special defense drop, uh, seeing the damage that he did without the special defense drop rather. And I don't really have anything that I want to pass the Psychic to besides my Tyrantrum, I thought that switch was really obvious to Tyrantrum so I went on to Rotom hoping that he didn't have Shadow Ball, and he actually went for Dazzling Gleam expecting the Rotom, and that works out, I mean expecting the Tyrantrum, and that works out amazingly because I was worried that he would expect that. I didn't think that he had Dazzling Gleam, but again, the switch to Tyrantrum was really obvious. So uh, I'm able to take out the Azelf, and now we get to go out into Venusaur against the Manaphy here. I'm just hoping for, I'm just hoping not to get burned. Actually, Critical hits me, which doesn't make too big of a difference here. But as long as I keep pressure on him, he won't be able to Mega Evolve. He definitely surprised me with Psychic, though. Getting a critical hit special defense drop on Psychic. Uh, that sucks because now I can't stay in on Manaphy. I didn't recover enough HP from Giga Drain to survive another Psychic, really, or to reliably survive it, um, especially with the special defense drop. So now I'm forced to switch out again, and I go out into Zapgeist here expecting him to want to just go for Psychic again. But he, of course, sees that that's happening, and he goes for Substitute. So that really, really is unfortunate because now I lost all my momentum. I had from keeping up with him from one turn of hacks there. But that's okay, I just need Rotom to live this hit and not get burned. I live the hit, but I do get burned. So that means Rotom's going to go down here, where Rotom was doing so nicely. I knew I could live the Scald, since he didn't have any Tail Glow boost up, but that was a risk that I really needed to take. I didn't have anything else that I really wanted to switch in there. After Togekiss takes the Entry Hazard damage, of course, then it becomes much more susceptible to being KO'd, and I really needed Togekiss around. Well, I still have Sableye. Uh, so I'm able to take out the Manaphy here with a very clean knockoff. And as he switches into his Sableye, I knew knockoff wouldn't KO it, so I went for Icicle Crash. And just like last week, I missed Icicle Crash. 
against something that has Dazzling Gleam. And he was just foddering his Sableye. He knew that he, that Sableye wouldn't be able to take the Icicle Crash. So now with my HP this low, I can't even live an extreme speed from Entei, nor can I live a switch into Stealth Rocks again. So I really have to get rid of Stealth Rocks before I can do anything. Expecting him to go straight for extreme speed, I go into my Don Fan here. I have Rocky Helmet on Don Fan, which is good. It's going to offset that recovery from his leftovers a little bit. And of course, Don Fan is able to switch it safely on extreme speed because of how little it does. Uh, he sets up a substitute. I have to go for rapid spin. I need Togekiss to be able to switch in. I need Weavile to be able to switch in. Um, and I don't think he can set up entry hazards with any of his remaining Pokemon. So here I'm just going, don't get burned, Don Fan. We need to break this sub. And I don't get burned, which is nice. I'm able to break the sub. Even nicer. Uh, he still has enough HP to make another sub, and he's going to get the leftovers recovery, of course. But, uh, and then I had kind of a choice here. I actually could have gone for Stealth Rock, but he's actually able to KO me with the extreme speed. And based on the damage he did the first time, I think that he must have gotten minimum damage the first time, because uh, I really wanted my Stealth Rocks up. I go out into Big Tooth here thinking that he had um, probably extreme speed sub, Bulldoze, but he actually has Iron Head, and that takes out my Tyrantrum, which sucks. Should have just gone into Venusaur. I did not think he would have had Iron Head. That was a fantastic play. Did not expect Iron Head from Entei. I knew he could learn it, but I didn't expect him to have it. Um, I finally get a bit of luck on my side here as he misses the Sacred Fire. Granted, it would not have KO'd me at that percentage, but he would have had that 50% burn chance. Um, so I just, I really just wanted to get my HP back right there. As Golbat comes in, I know I can't do much to it, but I can get rid of that Eevee Light that it has on it. And he shows me that he has Braver, which is a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping that he had Acrobatics or something for when his Eviolite inevitably got knocked off. But Braver does, of course, help me whittle down the Golbat's HP. Uh, it would have been really nice to have Dawn Fan for the Golbat, granted. But that's okay. I was hoping Togekiss could live a Brave Bird, but I don't live it as well as I thought I would. But at the same token, I, I'm forcing him to go for Brave Bird instead of going for Ruse, so that's nice. I still have Weavile left, but with the amount of HP I have left from uh, utilizing attacks, of course, I don't have enough really to hit this and the Entei. Um, so I'm forced to just stay in here and go for a knockoff here. I was worried that he might go into Entei expecting the Ice type move, so that's why I went for knockoff. Uh, and now it's just down to Venusaur versus Entei, and this really comes down to if I get burned, I lose. If uh, I can get my HP back without getting burned, then he wins. And this all links back to that uh, critical psychic from the Manaphy earlier. Unfortunately, he gets the burn on the first Sacred Fire. I think if he got the burn on the second or third Sacred Fire, I would have had a really good chance here. But I'm in a position where I have to recover my HP. And I don't get an opportunity to attack him. And the whole time he's getting back HP from his leftovers. So I, there's just really nothing I can do. I can try to run him out of Sacred Fires. But as you can see, I'm between the burn and sacred fire, I'm recovering less HP than uh, he's doing little by little. So little by little, he's just whittling me down. Right here, I just decided to go ahead and go for the attack. And I actually get the critical hit, but it's on the sub. So the one time that he decided to go for the sub, that worked out really well for him. And since I didn't go for a synthesis on that turn, of course, now my HP is definitely too low to live a sacred fire. He didn't miss any of the sacred fires either. I think he missed one earlier against Venusaur. But that just was not my battle to win there near the end with the, with with Weavile and Venusaur getting burned and his. I really think I lost the match actually when either when Weavile missed the Icicle Crash or when his Tyrantrum um, when my Tyrantrum was KO'd by that Iron Head. Those were the two things that I needed to not happen in order to have a better chance at victory there, and that just really sealed things up. So. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. I now have lost another round in the LBA. I'm going to say again due to hacks. Uh, I don't think I could have really played that match any better or prepared any better. But that's okay. We're going to roll into week 9. Week 9, I believe my opponent is... Um, wow. It's against the Chattanooga Chestnuts. So that's going to be an interesting battle. If only because um, the... Uh, the Chattanooga Chestnuts, they, I don't know, to me at least, they have a really, really good overall team. 
I don't think they've actually won any battles so far. So, far be it for me to give them their first victory, but I'm definitely going to try my hardest to win that match too. I think all of their matches have been really close though. I don't, I don't even think, like I've gotten swept. I don't even think the Chinese Chestnuts have gotten swept ever. It's all been really, really, really close matches overall. So, we're gonna go into that match heads held high despite all these other losses. And we're gonna do our best to take out the Chinese Chestnuts next week. Have a great week, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.